Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video load across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Monday evening, September 9, 2024. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons who are in the path of these tropical systems that we can keep everyone safe, especially during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. That's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives and even your church brethren. And subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Leave a comment down below letting me know what that has been like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future though in your specific era. Alright, so let us take a look at the US National Hurricane Center 7 day graphical tropical weather outlook. We can see that we still have those areas highlighted for some medium and high chances of development across the main development region. As a matter of fact, yesterday the system closer to the Caribbean had a high chance of development, it's not a cold red, and the system to the east of there had a medium chance. And we see that they flipped today. The system closer to Africa, according to the Hurricane Center, it states here. A trough of low pressure located several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is expected to merge in a couple of days with a strong tropical wave currently located just offshore of the western coast of Africa. Envir environmental conditions appear favorable for gradual development of this system, and a tropical depression will likely form during the latter part of this week while the system moves west northwestward at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We see that they've given it a 30% chance of cycling formation within the next 48 hours and a 70% chance of cycling formation within the next 7 days. And as related to the other system, an elongated air of low pressure located over the central tropical Atlantic is producing limited shore activity. Environmental conditions appear only marginal, marginally conducive for some slight development during the next couple of days. But a tropical depression could still form during that time while the system meanders over the central tropical Atlantic. And we see that they've given it both a 40% chance of cycling formation within the next 2 days and a 40% chance of cycling formation within the next 7 days. But the system of focus as a matter of fact let's look at the visible satellite images so that we can see these entities we can see one right here spinning away and the other one right here they're definitely you know taking their sweet time they're not in a rush to do much of anything but we're focusing our attention on a francine we finally have another system and we know after francine comes garden and we can definitely see the thunderstorms associated with Francine right there out to the east coast of Mexico spinning away. It has finally been upgraded to a tropical storm. We can see the deep convection associated with it as represented by the yellows, oranges, and red. As a matter of fact, this was the image from earlier today, which is why the Hurricane Center upgraded it. And according to the Hurricane Center, it is packing maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour right now. And we know it only takes what? For it to get up to 74 miles per hour for it to become a hurricane so it's getting there and if you remember yesterday's forecast it had more s's across the waters of the gulf of mexico and an h closer to louisiana now it has more h's so it's gonna be you know getting up to hurricane status who knows maybe even tomorrow's forecast it might get up to an m that stands for major hurricane if you know conditions are conducive it's expected to make it there by 1 p.m. on Wednesday. So if you have relatives or friends in Louisiana or Texas, please ensure that you check in on them. Let them know that there's a system brewing, a tropical storm for sea that could become a hurricane. So ensure that they are prepared for that. We know power outages can get regarding these systems. So get in touch with them before it's too late. And then, you know, it might take some time for them to get back power. It is moving right now to the north northwest at 7 miles per hour. So it's moving very slowly, which explains the tropical storm warning that we see right here in the blue across the northeastern portion of Mexico, the southeastern tip of Texas. We see that a tropical storm watch in effect for majority of Texas. While a tropical storm warning as well as hurricane warning and another tropical warning, tropical storm warning in effect for portions of Louisiana for the most part. So they're definitely going to be getting in on that bad weather. The system pushes northward. And if we take a look at what the supercomputer models are showing regarding the system, we're just going to be going out to the next one, just 68 hours. So we're going to be focusing our attention on Francine right here, as well as whatever comes off what these systems are trying to do across the Middle of region. So let's go out in time to the next one, just 68 hours, like what the Hurricane Center would do. First on the Euro model, we see the system pushing northeastward. 
into Louisiana, making landfall by about 6 a.m. Thursday, which is actually 1 a.m. on Thursday, and then continuing inland, possibly weakening to a tropical depression for sure. We know the land definitely does something to the system. They need all the warm water they can get to sustain them. The GFS definitely showing a similar path, more a bit eastern, east of what the euro was showing. But look at what we're seeing. It definitely heading inland. And then by the end of 168 hours, not much taking place. Especially across the Middle Palmer region. But look at what we're seeing at the end of 168 hours on the euro. And if you remember in yesterday's video, the GFS was showing something coming in from the Middle Palmer region. While the euro was showing nothing. But today it has flipped. Now the euro is showing something right there up to the northeast of the Caribbean. The GFS is not showing much of anything. Just to show you that these models are not always set in stone, we have to take them with a grain of salt most times. They're always showing one thing now and then another the other day, which is why we can't just be watching these models all the time. If we take a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, we can still see that frontal system still stalled out right there across Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, the ridge of high pressure right there to the north that's responsible for sending all of the easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean. We can see a tropical wave that's affecting portions of Hispaniola, Haiti, Dominican Republic as we speak. Another tropical wave right there to the east of the Caribbean the air and the air flow pressure attached to it. We can see the other air of low pressure right there off to the east of that one. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down, we can see the clouds associated with that frontal system. Till bring showers and thunderstorms to portions of Florida. The hurricane, well, the tropical storm for see, not a hurricane yet, right there. And we can also see the clouds associated with the tropical wave, definitely doing a number on Haiti as we speak. The clouds associated with the other systems right there to the east of the Caribbean. We'll be talking more about the rest of the Caribbean today later on. Let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today, Monday, September 9. It was stated that northwestern Jamaica would have gotten in some afternoon rainfall today. I don't know northwestern Jamaica we're talking about, well, first of all, western Jamaica we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall. But we're talking more so about the parishes on top of there. So more than likely Hanover, St. James, Trelawney would have gotten in on the brunt of this afternoon's rainfall and what ended up happening as early as 5 25 pm a post was made here on our twitter page of weather jamaica and i want for you to keep in mind that these posts aren't only made here on our twitter page but they're made on our instagram page of weather dot jamaica on our tiktok page of weather jamaica and on our facebook page of weather jamaica is so if you have one of those social media platforms please ensure that you follow us there as we make posts for the day that you can't afford to miss so we saw the high cold clouds of the thunderstorms that lash portion of especially northwestern Jamaica. But we did see some isolated thunderstorms across central Jamaica as well. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of Jamaica before the sun went down, we can definitely see that northern St. Catherine, northern Clarendon, maybe even northern St. Andrew got down some isolated thunderstorms. Even portion of southwestern St. Anne, section of Trelawney, section of St. James, Hanover, Westmoreland. Northern St. Elizabeth for sure got in on some of the isolated showers. So it kind of was in consensus with what the models showed. But as for the corporate era, the live stream for C Jamaica's YouTube channel showing crossroads at about 4 15 pm didn't show much in the way of bad weather. It was definitely fair right here in the southeastern portion of the island. The corporate era was speared of all the bad weather. And if you'd like to see more live streams like this just visit see jamaica's youtube channel if we take a look here at what happened regarding the accumulated precipitation from the caribbean institute for meteorology and hydrology website we can definitely see where we had that rainfall today across especially northwestern jamaica right there we see these colors that represent the rainfall for sure and if we take a look at what's happening right now we can see well we can see the thunderstorms being blown out towards the southwest first of all uh, courtesy of the upper level wind yes the upper level wind shear right there blowing the high cold cloud tops off towards the southwest if we take a look right here on the latest infrared satellite images or the latest image that just came out let's see if we can see that one 
all right so the latest image just came out as of 55 minutes past hour so this is as of 7 55 pm we can see some thunderstorms right there off to the south of west milan as we speak the sparkling white dots the high cold cloud tops as represented by the blues greens and the yellows within there and if we match it to the latest cube and doppler radar images we can actually see what's taking place for sure and we like to match these um satellite images to the doppler radar images and we can see as of right now the latest doppler radar image just came out as of 8 40 pm jamaica time well 8 40 pm cuban time which is actually 7 40 pm jamaica time and we can actually make all that rainfall right there um right there after this south of westmoreland for sure the greens the yellows represent moderate to heavy rainfall and if we take a look at the guantanamo bay, guantanamo bay cuban military radar you can see some of the isolated shores associated with the tropical wave across western haiti some rainfall right there across southeastern cuba as it relates to what's happening on the cayman radar we can see for sure that's if it's going to be loading for me if the internet is not too trash that i'm stealing yes i still have to be stealing wi-fi because my internet isn't back as yet but we can see some rainfall right there after the south of west Milan still and if we take a look right here and what's happening on the bagua gorge camera the flat bridge camera that is not much taking place quality is a bit poor considering the poor internet quality but it does paint a picture that is definitely a fair night much not much in the way of bad weather at all that's going to be the case for majority of the island if we take a look at the temperatures right now we can say about 28 degrees celsius in both montego bay and kingston and by about 4 a.m on tuesday temperature should have down to about 26 degrees celsius in montego bay 25 degrees celsius in kingston taking a look here at the temperature forecast for tomorrow this map from the gfs is showing 18 d on tuesday which is actually 1 p.m on tuesday we can see Jamaica right here embedded in some orange colors that we can see by the key on the right that represents all the way up to 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures. And other normal temperatures for the month of September across Jamaica are about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. When calculated, 90 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 32 degrees Celsius. So we should be receiving anywhere from 32 to 35 degrees Celsius at most for Jamaica's temperature on Tuesday. So please ensure that you stay away from alcohol, caffeine. That's the way you beat the heat. You try your very best to stay hydrated, drink lots of water. I was in Kingston today and boy, the temperatures were ridiculous. I had to be hydrated as a matter of fact. I ran out of the four bottles of water that I took to work with me because I was trying to stay hydrated. But boy, the heat was ridiculous. So please ensure that you dress down and eat more fruits than normal. If you take a look at the Saharan dust forecast, let's see if we can load the actual images because for some reason it's showing me 8 a.m. this morning. I don't want to see 8 a.m. this morning. I want to see 1 p.m. on Tuesday. All right, so let's see if we can load up this image quickly. All right, so for 1 p.m. on t all right, it's not on 1 p.m. It's gonna be 2 p.m. on Tuesday. We can definitely see that we still are in the clear. Not much in the way of Saharan dust. There's a little tongue of slight dust right here across the leeward islands into portions of Puerto Rico. You can see the most vigorous plume right there across Africa, right there to the north of the Cabo Verde Islands. If you take a look at the wave forecast for tomorrow, not much change across the Caribbean. The lighter shades of blue to darker shades of blue to represent 0.5 meter wave height all the way up to 1.5 meter wave height. While we're getting in on those 2 meter wave heights, all the way up to maybe even close to what 8 meter wave heights across the Gulf of Mexico, where we have Francine. And it makes sense because the winds are going to be strongest there. We can see the air spinning counterclockwise as usual with these low pressure systems. And we can see the winds from the east across the Caribbean averaging anywhere from 5 to 10 to 15 knots at most. While the winds are around Francine, just know that it's a 65 mile per hour tropical storm. So you do the math in knots. If we take a look here at the wind forecast for Jamaica tomorrow. We can see that the winds are going to be coming in from the east for the most part and the air is going to be piling up again across section of some central and western parts. So look out for that afternoon rainfall. And with the upper level winds still coming in from the northeast, all courtesy of the upper level high pressure across Francine. You can see the upper level winds right there. We're still going to be getting in on those 
overcast skies especially on the south coast because the high cold cloud tops are going to be blown out towards the southwest still look at this this is exactly what's going to be taking place again tomorrow thunderstorms across central and western jamaica inland areas more so and the high cold cloud tops again being blown off towards the south and west for sure that's definitely what's in store for jamaica's forecast on tuesday and we can definitely see it right here but i believe the year and the gfs models are more widespread yesterday it was forecast from more so northwestern jamaica and we saw that central jamaica got in a sound action tomorrow is forecasting more of the blues especially across central and western jamaica even incorporating portion of eastern jamaica too euro model is a bit more robust than the gfs for sure and keep in mind that this is valid for 4 p.m eastern standard time it's actually 3 p.m jamaica time so look out for that rainfall even the accumulated precipitation forecasting up certain consensus this is going to be running somewhere across jamaica tomorrow euro showing up to 0 0.57 of an inch of rainfall gf is showing up to 0 0.37 of an inch of rainfall either way we'll take it we're in the month of september in kingston we shall receive an increase in the amount of rainfall especially considering that it's the rainy season close to 100 millimeters that's close to four inches of rainfall montego bay shall receive more rainfall close to seven inches of rainfall that's close to 175 millimeters of rainfall and keep in mind that you can visit weatherandclimate.com to find out about your specific parish and what they usually receive, well, what you usually receive throughout the year and you can do the math yourself considering this map right here is showing that one inch of rainfall is about the same as 25 millimeters all right so that's it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we do see some thunderstorms across portions of central america nicaragua Honduras, el salvador guatemala costa rica panama as usual section of the eastern and northeastern caribbean definitely getting on some thunderstorm activity as we speak if we take a look at what's happening at the northeastern caribbean's doppler radar images we can definitely see some rainfall in and around the area the greens that represent some light to moderate rainfall the yellows that represent some heavy rainfall in and around the leeward islands to the south and east of puerto rico in and around the u.s and british virgin islands ashore if we take a look here at the barbados radar i guess it's glitched out don't see much taking place right now it was working earlier don't know what's happening right now we know how these things go these doppler radars can definitely break down in time but sooner or later they'll be up we can see some dots of rainfall in and around the area so it's kind of working but not really some rainfall especially up to the south of there across the portion of trinidad and tobago and we can see it all even better on the wider view of doppler radar images some rainfall in and around trinidad and tobago northern venezuela some rainfall right there to the east of nicaragua section of Honduras, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, section of Cuba, and even sections of Florida still getting on some rainfall. And there's still more rainfall in the forecast for these areas shaded in yellows, oranges, reds. That represents all the way up to well, all the way up to an inch of rainfall. More isolated shares for the, those persons are getting on those greens and yellows, all the way up to 0 0.3 of an inch. And those areas include the Bahamas, section of Florida, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the US and British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Martin, Guadeloupe, Dominica, Martinique, section of St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, section of Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, section of Belize, Guatemala, the Yucatan Peninsula. And if you look at both the UN and the GFS models, you'll see that there is consensus with this forecast. I know that when both maps from the UN and the GFS models are showing something similar, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.